And good morning, everyone. Dirty back with you once again. Going to be playing some more Civilization IV Colonization. I'm glad to have you along. Uh, if you're checking this out on YouTube a little bit later in your life, well, uh, this is actually the continuation of a Let's Play series that I've been doing. I did try uploading some earlier videos to YouTube, but apparently, even with this game's orchestral soundtrack, that stuff's uh, copyrighted. And I got content ID match, so those videos got muted, so I took them down because there was no point. So, uh, if you're looking to watch the earlier stuff, uh, you got to go to my Twitch page, twitch.tv forward slash and you can check out those older videos. A uh, word of warning, I knew less about the game than I do right now, so that means you'll see me stumbling around menus and stuff like that and not figuring out how to do stuff. So if you want to see someone who... Uh, doesn't know what they're doing in this game, well, he can look at those older videos, but like I said, they're not on YouTube, they're going to be in my uh, Twitch highlights page. So, uh, glad to have you along. Uh, this game, you see Civilization 4 along the top of the screen here now. Uh, this is built on the Civilization 4 engine, and there was an earlier version of Colonization done back in the 90s, I believe, and to me it looks like that was done on the original Civilization engine, so... It's kind of a, a remake of a expansion. <laughs> it's a bit convoluted, I know. Uh, I like to refer to this game series as uh, kind of a Civ's bastard brother. You know, it's it's there. You can see how it's related, but it's it's different in its own unique way. So it should be interesting. Uh, the main goal of this game, as opposed to Civilization, Civilization, you're trying to build uh, your small group. Of uh, your small tribe up to a grand civilization, take over the world, do your science victory, blah, blah, blah. Colonization is very much more focused. Uh, your turns go really, really quickly. Like, you can finish a game of colonization within two hours. So it's like the, uh, the cappuccino version or the espresso version of civilization. Uh, it's very focused. You have a set goal. You have to break away from your motherland. So what's going to happen is I'm going to start a colony. Uh, the motherland's going to start taxing me. They're going to start asking me for gold, and they're going to be just generally nasty to me. So I'm going to want to break away from them. So I'm going to have to build up some rebel set, uh, set some rebel sentiment, and I'm going to have to defend myself from the motherland when I try to rebel, because they will send over ships and troops, and they will be better equipped than me, but I will be on the defensive, so that should give me the advantage. All right, so we're going to start a game right now, and uh, yeah, there's no music. That's because I had to turn it down so this doesn't get content ID matched. This is actually a attempt a three to stream this. Well, not stream it, but do a let's play on it. Uh, I did do a third episode without the music, but it was after I got content ID matched, and you could hear it in my voice. You could hear my disappointment. Uh, you could hear I was drained of energy, so I wanted to start fresh. It's fresh in the morning. It's early in the morning, and uh, yeah, we're, we're going to get underway here. So I'm just going to bring up my own stream, and uh, apologies to uh, anyone who's watching this on YouTube. You can skip ahead just by a uh, couple of minutes right now, because it's just going to be me uh, looking up myself on my tablet so I can make sure that I'm actually streaming because this is a uh, older game, it's a full screen game, and I don't have the second monitor, so I can't easily flip uh, back and forth. I have to use the tablet for uh, basically checking up on my stream. It looks like it's going to work. And of course we have the uh, South Park advertisement uh, once again, that's on the go. So if you're watching that in the future, this was just after the second trailer of the uh, Fractured Butthole was released. Least. Available December 6th. That's like six months from now. All right, so it's showing live. It's showing the main menu. So I think we are ready to rock and or roll. So we're going to play now. You have four different colonies to uh, choose from. Like Civilization, your leader provides you different bonuses, so it depends on your play style. Uh, you have the French, Spanish, English, and Dutch. We played the Dutch, we played the English, so I'm going to try playing the French. So we have uh, Champlain and we have Frontenac. Uh, both these guys uh, have better relations with natives. Uh, 
I don't use this skill that often. I'll be explaining more about the skills as the game goes on, and I think you're going to catch uh, how to play this as I uh, play on. It's There's a lot to it, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that difficult. Uh, native conversion rate from missions. Okay, so let's do that. That's going to give us a lot of colonists if I do uh, certain things. I'm going to do a new world. Uh, we've been playing on Pioneer, and we've been losing on Pioneer. I'm going to continue doing that, though. Uh, we're going to start an epic game, because the game feels so short. Like I said, your end goal is so focused that uh, you can finish the game in like two and a half hours. Like It's the anti-sim where games can go on for like 20, 30 hours. All right, so yeah, let's do... Actually, let's try Marathon, and we'll see how that goes. And we're going to change our name to my broadcast name, and I'm okay with New Friends. And it's going to generate a map for us, and we're going to get underway. I'll do my best to try to talk you through kind of tutorial moments. Uh, I do have the tutorial tooltips turned off because I have played this game enough now to kind of know what I'm doing. Uh... I have to do my best, though, to try and not uh, jump ahead and get you guys confused. So, um, you know, if there's something, if you're watching one of these videos and I do something, and you're like, what the hell did you just do? Why did you just do it? Uh, leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. So, all right, here's the setup. In the year January, January's not a year. In the year January 1492, His Royal Majesty, the King of France, grants you a colonial charter. For the greater glory of the nation, the king dubs the Dundee, viceroy of the new world. Explore the new land, settle it, and bring wealth and glory upon yourself and a great nation. So this is our victory condition here. We have to found our colony. That's easy enough. You can do that within the first couple of turns. Declare your independence. That's a bit more tricky. You have to produce these things called bells, and that's going to raise the rebel sentiment. You have to have at least 50% rebel sentiment to rebel against your motherland. Before your time runs out, defend your country from the wrath of the motherland. That's the other caveat to this, is that they're going to send over troops. They're going to send over a lot of them, and they're going to send over very, very powerful troops. you got to remember, you're the rebels in this case. You don't have the backing of an entire empire, and you have to complete your revolution before any other European colony. That's probably going to be a given at this skill level. I've played three games so far, and I haven't seen any other colonies... Uh, I've seen them attempt to rebel, but I haven't seen them win their own rebellion. So I'm going to continue here now. So you start off with a ship. Uh, you have a couple of units. You have basically a soldier and a guy who can improve tiles. And the first thing that you have to do is make landfall. So there we go. And we encountered a native settlement uh, very, very early on, which you usually do in this game. They are pretty uh, prolific. And we do have some beavers here, which might be a good spot to uh, settle. We have some forest, uh, which brings us all sorts of different goodies that we can trade with our homeland. Uh, the way you get gold in this game is through trade, and pretty much exclusively trade. You either trade with your homeland, or you uh, trade with other nations and native settlements. And the trade with other nations and native settlements... It's very much akin to the civilization trade in the fact that it's probably going to be not stacked in your favor. I have some hills here for defensive bonuses. That is hills, actually. Light forest. So I'm just trying to puzzle out the best spot to build a colony. I may do it up here on this hill. This isn't a hill, isn't it? No. Okay, so we'll move up here. And we're just going to do some exploration with our ship. I will need the ship very shortly for uh, basically ferrying goods back and forth between the mainland and my colony. We have a settlement. And, uh, yes, there's going to be peace in our time with the Cherokee people. And we don't need to really talk about anything else. There is a diplomacy system. Uh, it's pretty much the Civ 4 diplomacy system. 
because this is built on the Civ 4 engine, obviously. So it's, I mean, diplomacy and Civ against the AI, it never works out great. It never does. I mean, we, we have to be honest here. At least not with me. Maybe I'm doing diplomacy and Civ wrong. Okay, so we want to get, get our soldier to found these settlements. And we're going to call this place Quebec. And we're going to build a dock that's going to increase our food output. You see next to water tiles plus two grains, so that means more food for us. So we're going to build that. We're going to get our pioneer to start improving tiles around our city here, so we can automate that. And just going to do a little bit more exploration with our ship here. Maybe puzzle out a second colony location. So last game, I basically had two main colonies, and I thought I was doing okay. Then I had to look at some of the other nations, and holy crap was I behind. This rum has fallen. So yeah, you'll get little notices up here from uh, your motherland telling you uh, prices for different goods that you can send back there. Now you start off, you're not taxed at all on what you send back, but as the game continues, the king continue, continues to screw, uh, to basically try to screw you over by taking a, a cut of any profits that you make. We should have a missionary show up, not a missionary, but a immigrant show up very shortly. Actually, speaking of which, let's take a look at our Europe screen. So yeah, this is our Europe screen. Uh, you can buy and sell with the motherland, and you can also get immigrants, 270 gold. So we actually have enough to purchase one of these guys, and we have a veteran soldier here, which I'd like to get, because I believe they're one of the uh, more powerful units in the game. So we're going to grab him. What we're going to do, we're going to send our ship back to Europe to pick him up. So we are playing on the marathon length. So it will be a few turns before we actually uh, get much done. But it does allow our ship to do a little bit more exploration than it uh, normally would be able to do. So yeah, it's uh, as in Civ, like your first uh, handful of turns. Pretty quiet, you're just basically waiting for stuff to happen. All right, so we're going to grab our soldier here, and we're going to sail back to the New World, and we're going to get the soldier to join the uh, colony of Quebec. Or maybe I should get him to start a new colony down here. That might be an idea. I think it's called going wide in sim terms, where you build a lot of settlements or going long. Be completely okay, and we do have a free colonist waiting for us in France, so we have to wait for our ship to get back here. And we're going to go back to France after we drop this guy off, and we're going to pick up our free colonists. So, uh, your immigration is driven by a commodity called crosses, you generate some, and uh, yeah, we're generating one per turn right now. And once this fills up. Uh, you get a immigrant that you can sail over to the new world. Of course, as the game goes on, the number of crosses you need goes up. So you have to keep that in mind when you're planning. All right, so we're going to look for another good spot to build a colony, and this looks like a good spot to build a colony. So we're building Montreal. This is very much the, uh, the Canadian uh, history thing. Even though in Canada we were like, yo, can we have our independence? And England's like, I, and that was it. It's not quite as uh, glorious or um, not so much war as the other, uh, as what America did. I know that's really, really simplifying it. So, anyway, I'll just leave it at that. Two different histories, two different nations. We're neighbors. We love each other. For the most part. 
Dong, dong. All right, so we'll grab our colonist here now, and we're going to, oops, we're going to sail back to New World, and we're going to dump our colonist up here, and we're going to grow the city of Quebec a little bit. Still producing one cross. All right, so we'll head up here and we'll get him to join the colony. Maybe it would have been better for me to get this guy to join the colony. I'm not 100% sure. But usually you get your worker in Civ to improve tiles. Maybe I'm, maybe this game is different enough, though, that I should be doing something different. Okay, so we're going to grab our guy. We're producing a lot of lumber. Actually, no, we're producing no lumber. We're producing fur, which we can sell to the homeland. I don't need to keep any of it. And we're also producing a lot of ore. Uh, so we're going to export the ore as well. We're going to want this colony to grow. So I'm going to stick this guy in fishing duty. And we're going to keep an eye on Europe. For an expert fisherman, an elder statesman might be good for us as well. All right, so uh, I'm going to set this boat up to automate trade. So you see I've set up our exports here. What that means is that once we automate this transport, the transport will pick up any excess that we have. It's going to bring it over to Europe. We can sell it in Europe and then bring it back here to the new world. So we're going to automate this. In our turn, just taking a glance at our stream just to see how framey this is. Uh, my last video, I mentioned doing the, I had the bit rate a little bit too high or the quality up a little bit too high for streaming. And after uh, watching the uh, the VOD for it, it did turn out very framey. So I did turn that down again. So if you, you're watching this on YouTube and you're wondering why the text looks a little bit fuzzy, that's why. I don't have a beast of a system or anything. I'm just playing this on an older laptop, playing it with a desktop mic. So I know we're not the highest quality stream, but uh, you know, I enjoy doing this. So I'm just going to continue doing it for now. Hopefully, at some point, I'll have the uh, means to upgrade some of my uh, gear. All right, so we have an elder statesman. And we do have some more colonists that we can take over. Uh, we said we're looking for a fisherman, though. 2400 wow that's uh that's not going to happen things are super expensive back in the homeland so we will grab a free colonist and we're going to get him to sail back with us now you can also use gold you can use gold to uh, hurry those servants you can also use them to hurry buildings which I might think about doing. I haven't done it yet in a game because I only discovered that you could do it last game. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take this servant down here and then we're going to take the statesman up to Quebec. Uh, hello, yes, there's going to be peace in our time. Like I said, we're going to be keeping an eye out for an expert fisherman. Now, if I do visit these native villages, there is a chance that they can teach me how to fish. Uh, so, okay, so we're going to unload our servant here. We're producing a lot of furs from this colony. We're also producing tobacco. So we're going to think about exporting that as well. Um, we do want the colony to grow first and foremost, though. So we're going to unload this guy to start fishing. We're going to set up our exports, and we're going to export fur. And we're going to export tobacco. So what's going to happen? Very, very shortly, the king's going to come and say, Hey, we noticed that you like trading fur and tobacco. We want to tax that. And I'm going to say no. It's going to be, I, we won't trade with you anymore. And I'm going to be sneaky, and I'm going to manufacture cigars out of my tobacco, and I'm going to manufacture coats out of my furs. 
start selling them to him like that. Okay, uh, we need you to go up here and drop off the Statesman. And our dock is almost done. Which will increase our food production. And we're going to start building these bells because apparently uh, you need to start really, really early to build up that rebel sentiment. We're at 0% right now. We have 300 guns. Okay, uh, we have our caravel. We're going to set you up to trade. So he's going to bop back and forth between our two colonies and head on over to France. And we're going to grab some more money from them. Again, I'm playing on Marathon, so it's going to take a few more turns than usual to... Okay, that must be the Rebel Sentiment uh, thing there, 11%. Five, okay. And I guess it's based on per colony. Ports of Quebec have expanded, that's cool. I'm going to sell all this stuff. Uh, now, what do we have? We have a Servant, an Ore Miner, and a Servant. Almost like a second ship, but I don't think so. We're going to grab this ore miner because ore is probably one of the more important goods you can grab. You need ore to produce tools. You need tools to produce weapons. So that's kind of the uh, order of operations for that. We're going to grab this farmer as well. So we can increase our food output. Maybe I will start a third colony as well. Like I said, I only had two last game, and uh, that didn't really work out for us. Okay. I was reading the wiki. It told me that, uh, yeah, Warehouse, they seem nice to start, but apparently you don't need all that much storage. So let's try building a... Could try to build a dry dock, but we don't have any tools. You see that zero out of 150 with the little symbol next to it? You need 150 tools to, to build that. So if I do end up building the dry dock, I'm probably going to have to import tools. What else do we have? We have the warehouse. You do not need a warehouse to have more than 100 food. I believe the lumber mill is pretty, uh, pretty vital. Also the blacksmith. So let's build the lumber mill, maybe? Let's build the blacksmith so we can get our iron production on the go. We're going to have to kind of focus on getting weapons and stuff. You don't... It seems like you got a lot of time to accomplish your goals, but you don't. Like it, you run into the end of the game very, very quickly. Okay, so we're going to take our farmer down here. And we're losing lumber in Quebec because we only have so much storage. So we can sell some of that lumber. We do want to keep a little bit on hand, though. Ten should be enough, I guess. We're not producing anything else, are we? No, okay. We will be looking for ore miners. I think I just imported one. All right, so let's uh, check out Montreal. So we have our farmer here. We're going to put him up in the fields. It's going to produce a lot of food. And this is our ore miner. We do have an ore field up here. So we're going to get him to do that. So now we're producing ore, so we can start to think about producing tools as well. Lots of food, so we can take in a lot more colonists. Uh, producing fur, tobacco, food. We don't have to worry about food. Okay. Uh, can we finish our dock? 800 gold? Apparently we can. We're going to get you to sail back to the New World. Do some trade. Okay, so we just built a dock. And what should we build next? Let's build our church. 
we're going to want to send out missionaries to these native settlements. What they'll do, uh, every once in a while we'll have a uh, converted native that we can uh, put to work in our colonies. Historically accurate, I suppose. Politically correct, not so much. Like the uh, Pirates game, you know. It was a different era. This actually takes place before Pirates uh, actually starts. Alright, so we do have some rebel sentiment building up. So the king's like, oh crap, uh, they're actually a little bit mad at me. So they're building up their troops here. So you have to kind of balance things out between having the rebel sentiment and, uh, okay, we're going to pay the gold for now, and having the troops to defend yourself. So we're going to sell this stuff. So it's a nice bit of gold. We have a blacksmith. I would like a second ship. So I'm going to hold off on buying anything for now. And I'm going to send this guy back. And when he makes the uh, next trip back, nice 25% cost of recruiting units. That is pretty good. Hopefully we'll have 3,000 gold and be able to uh, get a second boat. Now the ship that you start off with, with uh, the Dutch, it's a bit of a bigger ship, so you can transport more stuff. Of course, the guns has fallen. And he wants more gold. We're going to anger him. That means he's probably going to bolster his forces. I haven't seen the motherland invade unless you rebelled. But, I mean, I could be wrong about that happening. Okay, so we're going to sell all this stuff. That puts us over 3,000. So we're going to grab a second uh, caravel. And servant, servant, blacksmith. Can we get two of these? No. But we will take a servant back to here. And we're going to look at starting perhaps a third colony. Maybe down here. And those menus pop up really quick. I didn't mean to agree to that. So I have no idea what I'm being taxed on. Or why I'm being taxed. You'll be taxed on everything, but... Okay, so this isn't the guy with our unit, so we're going to just automate him. We're going to bring our servant down to here. And we're going to hopefully start up a new colony. Not sure what the ideal number is. Okay, so apparently this is our ideal location. I'm going to set up you to be automated. And uh, yes, plus one crosses. That means we're going to get extra immigrants throughout the course of the game. How's our rebel sentiment doing? Uh, these guys are at 40. We don't have anyone producing propaganda here. And of course we're going to have to do the same thing down here. Uh, okay, they're, they're doing a land claim on us, so we can't really do anything there. At least not until we get more gold. Okay, there is a native settlement there. Maybe what we should do with this guy then is we're going to head back to Montreal. And what we're going to do once we get there, we're going to change his profession to missionary. And we're going to send them to one of these settlements and establish a mission. Sell all the things. 1300s. We could establish that other colony right now. So I'm trying to figure what's the best thing to do. Uh, we do have bonuses. From being France, though, to um, kind of do this native conversion. So maybe we should focus on that. It might be better in the long run. Uh, okay, I got to pay him gold once again. Sucks. This guy is going, let's just talk with the chief. 
they need guns uh, and we're going to establish a mission I'm gonna sell the stuff and a fisherman might be a good idea for us preacher Yeah, let's grab the fisherman here. I'm going to get him to sail back, and we're going to stick him maybe in Quebec, and we're going to get that to kind of be our colonist output base. Okay, we're losing cotton in Montreal. Is that it? We're trading in cotton. Ore. So we're going to export our ore. Alright, that should be fine for now. Okay, we're going to bring our fishermen up to here. And that's going to free up the colonists to do something else. I still would like to establish that third colony. But I think no matter where I go here, I'm going to have to do a land claim settlement with the natives. Alright, so we're going to unload our fishermen here. Put you up there. That guy's now farming wheat. I don't know if we necessarily need that. So we are producing ore. We're going to want to start to, uh, start to produce tools. So let's do that. So we're getting three of those per turn. And okay, we're going to start automating this guy. So we do have a criminal waiting for us back in Europe. So we should have a ship arriving any second, and there he is. I'm going to grab this guy get as much gold as I had hoped. So we're just going to have to come back. And, uh, yeah. Try to figure out what to do. I was kind of hoping for a bit more gold. Uh, thank you for the cotton. Not sure why I pronounce cotton like that, but there you go. So I'm going to be breaking these videos up into half-hour chunks. I did do the pirate series as a long play. And I intended to do the colonization series as a long play, but um, I got burned with the content ID match, so I had like four hours worth of material gone down the drain. So we're just going to do a half hour at a time now, or 45 minutes, whenever I think I find a good endpoint. Okay, so we have our petty criminal. Uh, we're going to see if we can convert him to a missionary too, and maybe we're going to send him over here. And we're going to sell this stuff. And what do we have? Blacksmith, Statesman, Cannon. Maybe another ore miner in our second town. Okay, so let's unload this guy. And we're going to automate our ship once again. I'm going to change this guy's profession to missionary. And send him down there. And 25% uh, tobacco in all settlements. No, I don't really need that. A defensive pack sounds good. So we're going to send him down. We're going to get him to... Well, let's talk to the chief first. Thank you for the gift. I'm going to get him to found the mission. And that means that we're going to be getting uh, colonists from these guys. Uh, plus 50% native conversion mate rate. Yes, we want to do that. Because that seems to be Quebec strength. I'm calling ourselves Quebec now, as opposed to France. Which uh, basically happened in uh, IRL. 
a spot there to found a colony. Let's do it. I'm not sure if it hurts as much to basically found colonies in such close proximity. Like, if you look at your, your basically your city screen here, uh, in Civ, you know, your borders will expand and you have access to more materials. You're basically stuck with these six items. Like, your culture will expand, but you can't do anything else aside from, like, these... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, eight slots. Sell that. That puts us to a thousand. We're going to be getting an immigrant fairly soon. Thank you for the gift of tobacco. We're going to get you to build a settlement. There's my normal wake-up alarm going off. Because I'm usually just getting up right now. Guadalupe. And we're going to build a dock. And we're going to set you back to automate. And we're going to take a look at you. So this guy is producing ore. We're going to start exporting that. We can find it. Ore and lumber. So that's going to be kind of an industrial town, I think. And we have our colonist here. So he's making ore. Do I need food if I... Yes, we're going to start to run out of food if we don't start fishing. So we're going to be looking for another expert fisherman to try to fill out these spots. So I'll probably do another 10 minutes, and that will probably be about the half hour mark. And we'll end our first video. And we do have an immigrant waiting for us, a master tobacconist. I didn't know that was the thing. Oh, and you can choose the professions before you even start. We actually may make him a missionary because... Uh, we do have another settlement over here. And that is supposed to be the... Yeah, here we are. We're producing... Uh, natives here now, which means our population is going to be growing pretty good. So I'm going to try for the fourth settlement, and we're going to stop there from, from growing any more towns. Okay, so we're going to buy the land off this guy, and we're going to build a dock once again. So we're going to have a lot more micromanaging to do. And, uh, yeah, we're going to pay the taxes. Let's take a look at our rebel settlement. It's at uh, 9%. Uh, it's at 25 in Quebec. But we're going to have to start building it up in these uh, different towns. All right, so there's our missionary. We're going to get him to uh, come here. and increase the cross-production rate, which will increase our immigration. So we're all for that. Can I buy another ship? I don't have enough money, so we're going to head back to the New World, and hopefully we will have enough money next time to get, like, a third ship, because I think we're going to need it. Uh, just passing through. This guy's going to speak with the chief. Thank you for the beads. They're in need of coats. Uh, we want you to establish a mission. And we want you to come down here so we can sell you to France. Automate you. And I just changed that by mistake. I need to change that back to the dock. Lumber printing, where is Doc? Hold on. Warehouse. Uh, we'll give him a lumber mill. 
I thought we were building a dock before, but I must be wrong about that. Okay, uh, he's going to buy that treasure office. That's going to give us some gold. And hopefully we'll have enough for that second ship here now. And again, where we're playing on Marathon, we're going to have lots of turns where not much happens. Uh, 28, well, I need 3,000. Nope, we can buy that there now. 600, a silver miner, a blacksmith, and a servant. Let's grab the silver miner. Oops, I'm not sure what happened there because that popped up so quick. Sell all these things. Uh, nothing here I can really afford. Could buy a cannon, I suppose. Not really interested in that right now. Okay, what are they producing here? They're producing furs, so we're going to export that. Okay, now we have a surplus of tools. Which means we really should be making weapons when we can. We're going to export tools, but we want to make sure we have 200. I think that's the most you need for building stuff. Tools are one of the most important uh, resources in the game, I find. Okay, we have our silver miner. Now, what was the community that had the silver mine? You can mine silver from there at the price of mining ore. Mine ore there. Mine ore there. You know, I can mine silver there at the price of mining ore. Kind of got everyone in the wrong spot here. Silver miner, okay. Uh, we're gonna just stick him down here just to kind of grow the settlement. Yes, we're gonna be losing tools until we have a chance to export them. Okay, so we're producing fur here. Uh, we're going to want to be producing food so we can grow our settlement. I'm going to put that on automation. And we're going to continue on. All right, we have another converted native. So let's bring him up to... Montreal, I'm going to start producing bells there. We do have enough food. We have to wait till the end of the turn, though, to actually get him to do anything since he moved. Two bells, which isn't a lot. It's still at 25%. I guess 25 must be kind of the uh, the upper range sell do have quite a bit of gold nor miner a blacksmith and an indentured servant I wouldn't mind a fisherman and we're going to get him to go down here for our, our food production sell this stuff uh, let's grab the blacksmith. So we do seem to be producing a lot of ore up in this section of the uh, world. Boom. I'm going to sell this stuff. And that looks like our, uh, basically our timeout spot for this part of the Let's Play. So we're going to take a small break now. And if you're watching this on YouTube, we will see you next video.